On behalf of Prabhudas Leeladhar, I welcome you all to the Q2 FY24 earnings call of Mangalore Refinery and Petrochemicals Limited. We have with us the management represented by Mr. Sanjay Verma, Managing Director, Mr. Vivek C. Tongkaukar, Director of Finance, Mr. BHV Prasad, ED Projects, Mr. Shyam Kamath, ED Refinery, and Mr. Yogesh Nayak, GGM IC Finance. I would like to hand over the call to the management for opening remarks, after which we can open the floor for Q&A. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Payal. Uh, this is uh, Vivek Tonwalkar, Director of Finance and CFO, Mangalore Refinery and Petrochemicals Limited. As Payal has already mentioned, I have with uh, me over here our Managing Director, Sri Sanjay Verma, Mr. BHV Prasad, who is the Executive Director of Projects, Mr. Sham Prasad Kamat, who is Executive Director of Refinery, Mr. Yogesh Nayak, he is Group General Manager in Charge Finance. Our results for Q2 and H1 of uh, financial year 23-24 are with you and I hope that you would have gone through them. Let me just start with some highlights. <coughs> MRPL achieved a throughput of 3.21 million metric tons during Q2 and 7.57 million metric tons during H1. In July 2023, we processed our ever highest monthly gross crude throughput of 1.44 million metric ton. This reflects our capacity to scale to new highs during robust track margins by encashing the available opportunity. We clocked ever best BS6 motor spirit that is petrol monthly production of 195,000 metric tons during August 2023. The previous highest was in June 2023 at 174,000 metric tons. On the award front, uh, MRPL backed the following awards, Government E-Market Star Buyer Award, Dun & Bradstreet Award for Best Mini Ratna Public Sector Undertaking Across All Sectors, Best Innovation in Refinery Award, which is second time in a row during Energy and Technology Meet 2023, and Water Management Company of the Year 2023 from Energy and Environment Foundation. MRPL also became the first refinery in India to be certified with AS9100D 2016 for production, certification, distribution of aviation turbine fuel, which attests to the quality in the processing. Uh, some of the financial and operational statistics pertaining to Q2 are as follows. Our gross refinery margin uh, is $17.11 barrel, uh, dollars per barrel as against um, a negative figure of $4.46 per barrel in the previous Q2. The resultant PBT is 1,606 crores against uh, two, uh, a loss of 2,576 in the previous uh, uh, Q2. Uh, the PAT is 1,059 crores versus a loss of 1,789 crores in the Q2 of the last year. Uh, accordingly, our EPS has gone up uh, to 6.04 for that uh, for this quarter as against the minus negative figure of 10.21 in the previous Q2. Uh, we have reduced our total borrowings uh, by 4,234 crores as compared to September 2022 and resultantly the debt equity ratio has come down to 1.217 as against 2.24 in September 2022. The finance cost has also been reduced to 311 crores as against 315 crores in the previous uh, Q2. During the current year, current year H1 itself, MRPL has reduced its uh, long-term borrowings by 3,284 3, crores. The net worth of the company has improved from 8,106 uh, crores as of end September 22 to uh, rupees 11,906 crores as of end of September 23. It's an impressive 46% improvement in a one-year period. The standalone EPS, which is not annualized, has improved up 125 percent from 5.24 as of end September 22 to 11.82 as of end September 23. We would again like to reiterate that the above results were achieved even after taking mandatory shutdown of Phase 3 refinery complex during Q2, which lasted for about 45 days. As far as the outlook is concerned, gross refinery margin is a market play depending on what margins are available in the international markets. But we are committed to bring on board value-added products, energy efficiency and flexibility in crude processing, which is a USP of MRPL to maximize advantage of the available opportunities. Focus would also remain on uh, optimizing the operating costs and reducing debt. Uh, we would now be, that is a brief introduction about MRPL, we would now be uh, willing to take questions uh, from the analysts. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. 
anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touch tone phone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles The first question is from the line of Tabri Hazarika from MK Global. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, uh, I have three questions. Ah. Uh, first one is uh, first one is a bookkeeping question. Uh, your OPEX has actually gone up uh, during this quarter. Is it because of the shutdown or yes. anything specific? So it is about because of the shutdown and the reduction in the throughput that was there. Correspondingly, reduction in throughput. Okay, but was there any excise duty differential on closing stocks? Those kind of adjustments were also there. Come back. Uh, some excise duty payments and all, which are generally uh, held up actually at this point of time. No, 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 no much impact. Nothing of that sort. Okay, sir. Second question is uh, how much Russian crude are you procuring right now, and what is the uh, discount you have got? Uh, Q1 versus Q2, and also current run rate. uh generally in india uh, now the russian barrels that are available at a discount are uh, broadly are about 35 to 40% uh, in the country uh, we are also at similar levels as far as mrpl is concerned uh, discounts which were earlier higher on in the q1 have reduced but uh, yes they are still uh, they were still there for the q2 uh, crude procurement so can you give us some uh, numbers on the discounts uh broadly they are in line with what you would have uh, uh, got from the media reports also and uh, they are accordingly so in those lines only okay and right now so it's like uh, uh, it's further fallen or it's like too stable right now considering that uh, crude prices have gone up then uh in the immediate future i don't think we have had any procurements new procurements as of now they will come now okay sir and and the last question is regarding your uh, green hydrogen tender so uh, so has it been like awarded and uh, any details on that uh, green hydrogen tender uh, basically uh, uh, you know uh, we are uh, having a alternate talk of uh, you know our parent company ongc is planning to go ahead with a, a, a bigger scale project in mangalore Uh, we are planning to uh, go uh, along with ONGC uh, for the green project, the green hydrogen project. Okay, so you will not be setting up a electrolyzer. You will be buying from ONGC the green hydrogen for the refining. Is that yeah. correct? That's what we have. Uh, the, it is actually in conceptualization stage. Uh, you know, uh, either we go for a very minimal uh, investment initially. and later on whenever uh, ongc is project comes we want to uh, uh, go along with them but it is in discussion stage at this moment yeah, because because i remember seeing a tender of uh, 500 tons per annum i guess something of that sort uh, which was out so that has been scrapped right now it is still on no no it is not not yet scrapped yeah. uh, it is just an eoi we have placed uh, earlier uh, it's still under consideration okay sir Okay, sir. Fair enough. Thank you so much, and all the best. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask questions may press star and one on their touchstone phone. The next question is from the line of Mr. Abhishek Nigam from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah. Hi. Thank you so much for the opportunity. So, just on the shutdown. So, basically, third quarter uh, we will see full throughput, right? Without any. Third quarter, we don't expect any shutdown as of now. Uh, there's no planned shutdown at all. Yes, full throughput. Full throughput. Full throughput. Okay. And same for FY25. There is no minor shutdown planned for FY25, is it? 25, there would be a shutdown also. Uh, it would be in phase uh, two, two uh, because these are uh, uh, we, these are mandatory shutdowns and they come up uh, depending upon the period that they are due. Uh, this thing. Fair enough. Is it possible to give us a broad sense of how much volume impact could be there in FY25? FY25. Yeah, impact. I mean, uh, we are targeting, we are targeting more than 100% of our design capacity to be run. 
our design capacity is 15 uh, we would in, we are targeting that it should be more than 100% uh, and so we don't envisage too much of a um, as far as the design capacity is concerned okay fair enough so you will just plan it in such a way that there is no major uh, impact in uh, yeah as far as time capacity. So see, like see, see, Vijay, this is Sanjay Managing Director speaking. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To add on to what Director of Finance has spoken to you, sure. in the current year also, uh, we had a shutdown for 45 days for our Phase 3 refinery, which has a lot of complex units. Despite of that, uh, we are uh, uh, definitely going to have a more than 100% capacity utilization. And as you are aware that uh, MRPL refinery has got a three trains of uh, crew trains basically. Sure. And the second train which will go for a mandatory shutdown in Q2 uh, next year most probably. And we don't anticipate any uh, lower throughput than 100% in the next year also. And primarily if you see the data of MRPL historically, uh, uh, we our strength is our physical performance. So we, we 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 are looking for a, a more than 100% uh, capacity utilization in years to come, despite of these mandatory shutdowns. Last year, if you can recall, uh, we have even clogged 17.14 uh, uh, mmTPA of our <laughs> capacity utilization because that year was having zero shutdown. So once in a four-year refinery do get uh, one year such where no none of the three trains will have any shutdown. So that is the capability where uh, we can, you know, be somewhere between our 100% cap capacity utilization to somewhere around 17, 17 odd. Okay, fair enough. That, that's useful. And uh, last question for me, in terms of CAPEX, if you could give us a guidance for, you know, second half and FY25. For CAPEX, our annual CAPEX is, would be uh, around 1,000 crores. Uh, so for the uh, next H2, uh, for the H2 that is coming up, probably it should be between uh, 400 to 500 crores. Okay. And FY25, will you be able to give us some sense? 25 also, broadly it should be about 1,000 crores. Okay. As of now. Perfect. Thank you so much, sir. That's, Thank you. That's all for me. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind all the participants that you may press star and 1 to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Mr. Saket Kapoor from Kapoor Co. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, Namaskar, sir, and uh, thank you for this opportunity. Sir, as uh, being alluded by you that we are uh, looking for a capex of 400 crore for H H2 of this financial year. So this 400 crore would be for the modernization. If you could explain the nature of the capex. So the um, 400, 500 crores that we are likely to spend is on existing projects that are continuing. We have got a Devan Gundi project coming up, which is under execution. Uh, it is likely to be completed during this uh, H2. Uh, so those payments uh, would be there. There would be other capex uh, expenditures that are undertaken within the refinery also. So those uh, which are already under execution. And for that also, these uh, it's already budgeted, so these expenditures w would be uh, completed or uh, uh, achieved during this H2. And for that, uh, 500 crores odd uh, is being uh, is is likely to be spent. The, uh, our, our, yeah, yeah. Please, sir, you continue first. Yeah, capex. Uh, uh, in addition to our director of finance, what he said, the Devan Gunti is a marketing term project. Then uh, we have a vitamin uh, uh, blowing uh, unit, uh, which is coming up, which is likely, uh, which is uh, getting completed uh, in the next quarter. Uh, then a few other uh, units which are within the uh, refinery uh, is being uh, put up. And uh, next one is, you know, we are also into uh, retail marketing. The capex also includes uh, retail outlets. Okay. Uh, sir, closing balance for September, the first half is uh, closer is at 678 crore and uh, we will be uh, spending 500 more and uh, uh, the, the amount that is to be capitalized uh, as on March 24th uh, would be closer to what value, sir? Uh, that that is closer to as the director of finance said thousand crores uh, six hundred already we have uh, booked up to thirtieth September uh, based on the completion of the project it will be taken to uh, property plant and equipment otherwise it will be in the capital work in progress. Okay. Uh, 
right sir and for fy 24 25 what have we uh, outlined sir the, uh, the amount is uh, uh, yeah 1000 1000 crores in the range of 1000 crores okay so a, a request sir in the press release part if if you can also provide us with the break up of the capex part amount spent on the projects also and the and the, and, and and when the project is likely to be commissioned that would give us more color on uh, where the uh, where, where the amount have been spent so that will suffice a lot, lot of our uh, queries uh, please uh, look into the uh, the component of the simple and first sir thank you for uh, arranging this call and we we will look forward for the continuity sir as we have done this uh, this uh, this uh, maintenance shutdown what are the uh, benefits in terms of the improvement in yield on distillate that we may uh, 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 we may incur going going ahead and sir are we working on any uh, uh, residue upgradation program also there is a couple this is sajeev varma managing director i would like to just respond to it and then i will hand over to ed ripandi if we can suffice to think further to it Phase three uh, refinery. What we have gone for a mandatory shutdown was basically for a certain critical uh, unit where the catalyst was uh, at the end of its life. So the replacement of the catalyst and inspections and proving the refinery as per the mandatory requirements and statutory requirements. So those were uh, this thing. And this uh, phase three refinery of MRPL has the bulk of the bottom upgraded units only. so post uh, this shutdown uh, i think uh, the displayed <coughs> yield and all uh, is uh, not likely to be impacted like uh, we we are having a, a displayed yield of typically 78 to 80% of the yield is there and the uh, 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 sor uh, uh, that is a start of run condition the efficiency may be marginally little high but uh, we would like to you know uh, at this point of time this is what is our outlook because no additional unit in uh, phase 3 has been you know, uh, brought in and i will just ask uh, if our ed repairer wants to add on to your question uh, thing else so can... it's basically your energy front uh, we are expecting uh, there will be an improvement because whatever issues we had because it's a mandatory shutdown so definitely we will be having some improvements on the energy front uh, as rightly said on the catalyst since there is a start of run definitely there will be some improvements that's to our uh, second question on upgradation uh, plans uh, it is still in uh, uh, you know consideration it is in uh, uh, you know feasibility report uh, stage uh, at this moment uh, uh, you know we'll come back to you on uh, upgradation project there are few in plan Sir, in, in, in your earlier reply, you mentioned that we have our uh, capacity at 15 million ton, and uh, with with improved uh, set of uh, throughput, we can uh, we 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 look forward for 17 million ton. This is the number we can work uh, with this uh, with this uh, maintenance. So no, see, 15 million metric tons is the design capacity of the plant, depending upon. Uh, how the availability of crudes and the availability of the equipment etc we have been able to run it at more than 100% and previous year we did 17 uh, million metric tons of uh, crude processing uh, whether that is a representative for future years as of now we would not be uh, able to say that but as md had mentioned earlier on it's usually when the all the three all the full uh, refinery is available uh, continuous basis once in four years uh, generally the processing would be on towards the higher size last point on this sir inventory gain sir can you outline to us the number uh, since uh, what have been the inventory gain or what is the closing how is the closing stock uh, inventory valued uh, and the color on the same the inventory gain uh, for h1 it is around uh, 2 dollar then the prices have uh, increased from compared to um, 31st march of 2023 to 30 september 2023 there is a inventory gain of uh, 2.1 However, uh, the inventory levels have come down. We have maintained my uh, almost optimal uh, inventory level. So, can you quantify the number in uh, in absolute number term? Two dollar will translate into what in amount in profit? Two point one dollar amount to. Nine hundred sixty crore. Nine hundred and sixty crore. 
so the EBITDA number of 4332 contains an uh, inventory gain of 960 crore. Yes, the inventory gain is only a change in uh, opening stock and closing stock. Uh, however, going forward, if the prices remains the same, it will be uh, realized. It will be realized. Sir, and so the factors that has led to this GRM of seventeen dollars uh, are these. Yeah, I mean, if you could give us some understanding how how the GRMs are currently shaping up, and what factors did lead to this 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 GRMs of seventeen dollars and its continuity. I mean, if you could give us some color, whether this is a new normal set or there are external factors. When they dissipate, will come. There will be a mean revision again. Uh, MD sir has uh, told already this is a market driven. The prices are market driven. So going forward, uh, we cannot predict. But this 17.11 is uh, uh, because of our internal as well as external factor. Internally, we achieved a, a maximum throughput during the uh, cracks were good. So July we have achieved highest throughput. Then the prices. Uh, cracks have been improved since August. Then, uh, even though the SAID is levied at uh, certain level from uh, 14th August, uh, we could uh, get the uh, good margins in uh, our products. So that has resulted in uh, a good GRM for the Q2. I would like to, that would like to add on, Sanjay Verma here, managing director. Whatever uh, head finance was speaking about. Uh, see, uh, uh, if you see the general across the uh, refinery industry in India, all GRMs are reported very good. So, uh, uh, one factor is that uh, market conditions were uh, good in the Q2. So, that is uh, definitely over there. And uh, uh, outlook for Q3 as, as we see today, uh, my guess is that uh, yes the cracks with the winter coming in in a uh, uh, western side of the world uh, uh, likely to hold on to this uh, levels and we are looking for a similar kind of a performance in q3 also correct sir okay thank thank you sir i joined the queue and for the atf sale part if you could give us an understanding now my what annual number Yeah, I'll come in the queue for formal remaining questions. Please rejoin the question queue. Thank you. Yeah. So much. Yes, madam. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ribhu On from UBS. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks sir for the opportunity. Uh, so firstly, sir, uh, can you please tell us what was the fuel and loss uh, for this quarter or for the first half in terms of percentage? And uh, uh, how do we plan to maybe reduce this kind of number going forward? So, for fuel and loss for this quarter Q2 was 11.28 percent, and for the previous year Q2 it was 11.66 percent. Okay, and sir, uh, so shall we take this like number uh, going forward, or uh, are we doing any projects so that we can reduce? So it, it is likely to improve because, as our ED refinery has told to the earlier question, our phase three yeah. unit uh, we have undertaken a shutdown. So there were little efficiencies issues, which has been you know addressed, and uh, we are looking into a betterment of this number, uh, whatever director finance has spoken about. So Q3 yeah. we are likely to have a better fuel and loss number, and uh, just uh, to add on. that this fuel and loss is not for the refinery alone because uh, as you are aware that we are also operating a uh, uh, aromatic complex also uh, within the refinery so this is a combined fuel and loss uh, for aromatic complex as well as a 15 million metric ton of the refinery and we are expecting to better it in the uh, current quarter got it sir Uh, so my second question is uh, our plans for ramping up our uh, fuel retail outlets so can you give us a number how many retail outlets we have now and what's uh, the targets for maybe end fy24 or fy25 so rigu let me just uh, uh, give a brief uh, that we aspire to uh, have our uh, domestic market capture to the tune of 1 million metric ton in coming 3 to 5 years as okay. of now we have a 75 retail outlet and uh, advertisement for another 1800 retail outlet is out and we are likely to conclude it very shortly and we are aggressively going on uh, our uh, uh, increasing our footprint in the uh, retail outlets 
and uh, we we are looking uh, maybe in another 3 years close to around 500 uh, uh, odd retail outlets predominantly in a first phase in the southern india and once we are uh, established in the southern india we are also in a phase 2 of <coughs> retail marketing expansion we would like to uh, move upward western india uh, uh, and uh, north india side so these are the uh, stages of planning and strategies what we are having for the expansion of the marketing uh, uh, retail networks this year itself we are expecting that uh, we should have more than 100 retail units yes. up and running yes okay sir and sir uh, if you can give us the throughput from the retail outlets for this quarter or the first half uh, yes. from the from like uh, 75 yes. outlets it's very difficult because it all depends on the location highway rural all those kind of things are there but in a very general term uh, our retail outlet uh, typically uh, are doing a better throughput uh, with the uh, competitors by around 20 kl to 30 kl uh, per outlet and uh, we are getting a good uh, you know uh, response uh, through our uh, customers and customers are Coming back to our retail outlets, uh, uh, this is what is our experience as of now. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Th thanks for the detailed answer. And lastly, sir, are you uh, taking any LNG or do you plan to take any? Uh, because I think the prices have again gone up slightly. Uh, so, what kind of prices do make sense for us? Yeah, just a quick answer to you to this question that we we have a connectivity with the Kochi gas yeah. line of scale. And uh, uh, currently we are not taking, but we are actively considering looking into the price of the gas. And uh, once it becomes uh, economical uh, for us, uh, for the refinery operation, we do switch over. In past we have switched over. So this is an economic decision based on which we uh, keep on, you know, taking uh, uh, gas into our system. And uh, this gas we are using as a feed also, as a fuel also. So there are two economic calculations which come into the play. For fuel is a one calculation. If it breaks even, we use it as a fuel. Otherwise, uh, as a feed also, another calculation is there. If it uh, is economical, we take it as a feed to certain process units. Yes, sir. If you can mention, you know, any kind of percentage slope to Brent or something like that, uh, at like what economic levels it uh, makes sense for us? Um, it's a, as for the industry practice. Currently, we would not be able to place a figure as of now. Okay, sir. Got it, sir. Got it, sir. Uh, thank you so much for your time, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Riju. The next question is from the line of Mr. Gagan Dipshit from Elara Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah thanks for taking my question. Uh, sir, uh, can you share details of the this OMPL, what is the utilization in Q1 and Q2? OMPL utilization in Q1 and Q2. OMPL is now, uh, it is already integrated with MRPL. There is no separate uh, company or uh, unit as such for OMPL uh, as of now. Okay, okay. So, uh, if we get the sense at least that uh, what is the, uh, I mean, sales or uh, volume uh, that is produced, that would be helpful. Sir. It's like any other unit. So, it is uh, now continuously utilized. Yeah, uh, Gagan, this is Sajay Verma, Managing Director speaking. Just to, you know, uh, reiterate what our Director of Finance has told. OMPL, uh, uh, as of now, doesn't exist. It has been merged with effect to 1st May 2022 with MRPL. It is a consolidated balance sheet which comes. So, whatever units are there in OMPL, uh, those are uh, like any other units in the refinery premises. And uh, to answer to your specific questions, the uh, units which are op uh, available in the OMPL, uh, presently we run it on a uh, reformat mode. Uh, the, the PX, the other products, uh, because the mar uh, PX market is not uh, economical, so we are not operating. We have a product swing from PX to reformat mode. And the uh, block which is uh, producing PX uh, in our aromatic complex, that is Earthwell OMPL, operates at a full capacity. Okay, sir. And sir, uh, my second question is, when you uh, told that Russian crude discount is typically 35 to 40 percent, so this is excluding the shipping charges or including the, I mean, the that shipping uh, charges? discount, uh, no, no. But I I'm think you have misunderstood. Uh, let me clarify. It is a uh, Russian uh, 
crude what was you know processed is that value quantum of the total yeah. crude out of which the russian crude is 35 to 40% for the indian markets as such indian refineries as such we are also on similar lines okay okay and sir my third question is uh, uh, in the previous call the uh, ongc actually told that uh, i mean about the question of the merger of the this mrpl with the hpcl so they said that there is some tax benefit uh, that uh, this uh, mrpl would lose due to the merger so if you throw some light of it or how much is the amount uh, something because they say that uh, something uh, actually they are waiting for 3 to 4 year period to uh, get utilize the all that remaining tax benefit So when OMPL got merged with MRPL, there were certain losses of OMPL which were also taken over by MRPL, which give benefit as far as the taxation is concerned to MRPL. Uh, total quantum was around 7,000 crores odd at that time. Uh, still, we have around 3,000 odd crores of losses which need to be considered for and take advantage of the tax because of that uh, merger part of it. So, which we expect that over a period of three to four years, uh, this would be uh, utilized. Uh, so if we uh, uh, so uh, that is what ongc would have also mentioned to you uh, over there so if at all any other mergers uh, uh, if we do minimally 5 years have to happen where till we complete this uh, take over this uh, after that take over for this losses to be considered otherwise uh, there would be a refund of taxes etc which would not make any deal so to say economical for whoever does it So just to add on to what Director Panayan has spoken, this is Sanjay Verma, Managing Director. I think it is a call which will be taken by our parent company, holding company, which is ONGC, at an appropriate time. And to best of our understanding, these are the issues which are being explained by uh, Mr. Vivek, Director Panayan, Mr. Yeah, yeah, that's helpful, sir. That's helpful. Happy Diwali, sir. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask questions may press star and one on their touchstone <coughs> phone. The next question is from the line of Mr. Saket Kapoor from Kapoor and Co. Please go ahead, sir. Yes, sir. In terms of the OMPL part, sir, which you were mentioning, sir, what has been our total investment in the project, uh, and and uh, how is the payback working currently? And and that units are working at 100% replacement level. Yes, sir. Give me a second, sir. Uh, we have uh, got disconnected from the management line. Please continue to hold on. I'm trying to. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Equity as well as loans. Yes, uh, the management line is connected. Uh, Mr. Sakit, you can uh, please repeat yeah. your question. Yes. sir i was uh, i was coming again to this ompl part uh, what uh, uh, how much has been our investment there in the unit and currently uh, uh, how is the uh, man, uh, physical performance of of the unit and uh, also on the profitability one how are the margins in the poly poly uh, business okay uh, so the first part of it is that investment by ompl it was uh, we took over the equity from ongc and also took over uh, the loans that were outstanding which is around 4000 crores uh, totally in totality uh, performance of the unit yes it is performing we are producing reformat as already md mentioned earlier on uh, so this was uh, uh, it is already we are it is the process unit is already in stream so to say and what was your last uh, so mr uh, okay the that polypropylene what you are talking is not produced in ompl okay sir in the refinery complex and that unit also is uh, 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 performing more than 100% capacity and that unit also underwent a mandatory shutdown along with the phase 3 unit because it is a part of the phase 3 unit and it is uh, put back to the operation and running at a currently at a 100% plus capacity Okay, so sir, uh, what have been the product profile for OMPL currently? I mean, when we took over OMPL, uh, OMPL. Exactly. Let me give you a brief. We uh, it, it's our aromatic component <coughs> right now. We don't uh, call it as a OMPL. I am repeating again. Uh, our aromatic complex is uh, located in a SZ area adjacent to the refinery. The original products were uh, paraxylene and benzene. but as i mentioned to the earlier question that paraxylene market is uh, uh, down at this point of time and we have a production capabilities in the refinery as well as in our aromatic complex so we have swinged our product slate from paraxylene mode to a reformat mode 
which goes for the ms making and uh, being a sz unit it is getting uh, exported uh, and uh, it uh, earns uh, uh, a good margin so that is the operation of the uh, aromatic complex and the complex is running currently on more than 100% capacity utilization on recombinant mode okay and sir you mentioned in your press release about the atf part also so currently uh, 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 in the product profile what what percentage is attributed towards atf and how is this atf sales going to be ramp up on, a, on an annual number what should be looked uh, forward atf uh, yeah atf typically whatever we produce uh, <coughs> 80% of the atf uh, gets exported and uh, we have a joint venture within india with the shell mrpl jv uh, through which uh, we channelize the domestic market and uh, omc is also buy occasionally atf from mrpl and uh, what was mentioned in our press release was regarding the certification uh, which uh, mrpl has obtained in this q2 and that is i understand that mrpl is the first indian refinery and very few in the world who has got accredited with the aerospace standard as 9100d uh, um, revision uh, 2016 this is a basically a quality management uh, requirement for aviation space and defense organization and mrpl has been certified to complying with this kind of a standard so this gives us a edge in our international market about the quality production and uh, distribution of the uh, um, aviation um, uh, fuel uh, aviation turbine fuel and that puts us uh, on a little uh, you know uh, uh, better position as far as the marketing of uh, atf is concerned both in uh, export and domestic market but it is all through the jv and direct sales to mc as you mentioned we are not selling under uh, uh, under mrp when directly uh, it is not sold it is sold domestic sales if mc is wants to buy from uh, mrp we do give them uh, jv is our uh, jv as i told you is another channel through which uh, uh, in a certain part some uh, uh, 10 odd airports they are operating and uh, we are earning profit out of that jv so 20% typically uh, is our domestic penetration on this and we are expanding through our jv on this uh, for uh, increasing the jv is our marketing arm for atf okay sir and, and our current market share in the atf in uh, in a few uh, i can tell uh, uh, in a few of the airports the major airports in bangalore we are number 2 uh similarly in other airport uh, uh in uh, south india there is one more airport uh, trichy we are number 2 in all other places either we are uh, uh, you know by the number 3 or number 2 in the in terms of uh, you know uh, standing uh, in volumes so i would just like to add on to what mr prasad our ed project and marketing is talking about uh, devan gundi we are coming up mrpl is coming out with a terminal so where uh, which is getting fed from the mangalore bangalore pipeline and uh, with this once it gets commissioned in this quarter uh, mechanical <coughs> completion any time it will happen and shortly either at end of this uh, quarter or mid of the next quarter we hope to uh, be on line with that uh, devangundi terminal which is in the outskirts of bangalore so this will bring a lot of uh, uh, you know attractive cost of placement of various product in bangalore including atf and which will make uh, uh, us uh, to capture more market uh, uh, in the southern india so that is another uh, focus area for mrpl through which uh, uh, we look to you know penetrate uh, in the auto fuel and the aviation turbine fuel also right sir so one bookkeeping question if you, if you may permit me firstly what goes into the consolidation part sir the other income line item is uh, what gets reduced so if you could explain that and also there is a liability provision written off to the tune of 67 crore uh, for this first half so if you could explain these two line items yes we have got your question i will request our uh, group general manager finance uh, in charge of the finance function uh, he will uh, address your question uh, just give me a minute Uh, we on consolidation uh, process we are we have eliminated the inter company transactions 
by doing which uh, we are uh, consolidating and the consolidated uh, profits uh, uh, we have reported 1598 crores against 1606 crores this is based uh, from shell jv that is uh, pertaining to previous year which was more than that uh, profit share of current year because of that the consolidated profit has come down uh, only this is the reason otherwise if the profits are uh, equivalent to the dividend the uh, there will be a higher uh, consolidated profits. Sir, your line got dropped, sir, or either I missed it. If you, if you could just repeat your statement. Yeah, this on, uh, during the consolidation process, <coughs> we are eliminating the intercompany transactions. We have only one uh, JV with the shell uh, for marketing the aviation turbine fuel, uh, wherein we have in receipt of a dividend pertaining to the previous financial year, which is more than the current financial year's 50% of profit. We have a 50-50 share in that, MRPL as well as uh, Shell. By eliminating uh, this uh, intercompany transaction, the reported PBT is uh, less compared to the standalone uh, PBT. 1,606 was for the Q2 on standalone basis. Uh, on consultation, it is 1,598 crores. Okay, I get it offline, sir. And for the liability return off, sir? Uh, that is also the same. The intercompany transactions, if anything is there, we have to eliminate the payables and the receivables. Uh, right, right, sir. Sir, and last point on the income tax paid. We paid uh, it would have been 1400 crore. Yeah, I'm just concluding, ma'am. This is the last point, please, if I can Please uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. The income tax paid uh, is to the tune of 1400 crores. So this is all attributable towards the the performance of the first half. Uh, that is 45 percent of uh, what is uh, due to be paid uh, as on September 15th. 1400 crores. Uh, uh, which which quarter you which were Oh, sorry, it is 1400. I think so. I'm sorry. Uh, income tax. Yeah, yeah. 400. Huh? 400 only we have paid. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This 400 is attributable towards the, uh, the uh, operation money profit for the first half uh, or yeah. any prepaid items or, or money what if you could give some. Under, under match provisions we have to pay this uh, for the current uh, profits only. Current profits only. Yeah. Yes. Sir, sir, we look forward for the continuity of the calls and also some more understanding uh, in, in your press release as requested earlier on the CapEx part. If that could be outlined, uh, that would suffice a lot of our uh, uh, interest, sir. And, and, and thank you once again, Prabhu. We'll, and we'll look into that matter and uh, be in touch with you. Yeah. Th thank you once again, sir, for, for giving us this opportunity. Thank you. And thank you. As there are no further questions from the participants, I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Uh, thank you very much uh, and uh, we are happy to be able to take questions and uh, we would continue to engage with the analysts. Uh, separately also if anybody else wants to be in touch with us, we welcome all those queries and uh, we hope to meet uh, uh, the analysts and satisfy their queries uh, as far as possible. Thank you very much. So, uh, this is, uh, yeah. This is Sanjay Verma, Managing Director. On behalf of MRPL and my colleagues over here, I thank everybody who have uh, taken the time out and uh, uh, raised the <coughs> query. I hope that uh, we have responded uh, to the queries uh, and if any further queries are there, uh, as uh, Director Finance has told that uh, we are open for you know uh, uh, getting connected further one to one also is uh, not an issue. So we thank all uh, uh, investors and analysts for this and uh, looking forward, the forward looking statement is that our uh, annual turnaround of phase 3 refinery is over and uh, we are looking for uh, consolidating our position in H2 and uh, um, uh, I think uh, once again we thank you from uh, MRPL uh, side to everybody. Thank you madam, over to you. Thank you sir. On behalf of Prabhudas Leeladhar Private Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.